Thank you all for being here online again tonight. <laughs> we did push back the start date to accommodate your requests, but um, now we're just a few days away from being back in the building. Now, as you can see, I've got a PowerPoint to share tonight, so let me just get that started. <laughs> we don't. Uh, Sin's trying to say something, but he's muted again. Uh, <laughs> I assume that he's trying to say we don't see a PowerPoint. Yeah, you don't? Um, that's weird. It's right here on my screen. Uh, huh. Can you see it now? I'm sorry. I thought I hit the volume button. I must have hit me by accident. Um, yeah, we don't see anything. Okay. Um, what about now? No. Why don't I just share the presentation and then you can tell me when to advance the slides, okay? Thanks. There, can everybody see that now? Oh, excellent, that works. Now, as you can see, this is the reopening plan for next year, for this year. <laughs> next slide. Um, the students will return on September 14th and we will reopen safely by using teamwork, having mask break, making sure parents, teachers, and students monitor and report symptoms, following our new and improved safety protocol, and we will have shorter days. The biggest risk this year, obviously, will be the COVID exposure. You don't say. Was there a question? No? Okay, Ashley, next slide. Returning to school, how exciting. Teachers will be back on September 1st for a staff training on new protocol and rigorous team building activities to ensure we're ready to function as a unit when the school reopens. Masks will of course be required for this and all things moving forward. As you can see, students will return on the 14th. Masks will be required for all students, second grade and up, and encouraged for those in kindergarten and first grade. Transportation will still be available and we will be providing free before and after school care for those who need it. Sin, you're muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is that before and after school thing? mean for us but are we expected to be there for extended days well we'll get into that shortly required isn't the exact word i would use um even expected isn't the exact word i would use but highly recommended would probably be more appropriate next slide so safety is very important obviously so we'll be enforcing social distancing when possible Masks must be worn, students and staff are to stay home when sick, and teachers are to provide for their own PPE and cleaning supplies. Next slide, Ashley. Uh, wait, what was that last thing you said? Next slide? No, before that with the PPE. Uh, um, Ashley, you went ahead too far. Go back to the last slide. teachers to provide their own PPE and cleaning supplies. How are we even supposed to do that? Will there be like a stipend or something? I sure as hell can't afford to buy my full PPE and I don't even know where to find cleaning supplies right now. I barely have any at home. <laughs> this is crazy. Let me guess, we're responsible for daily deep cleaning before and after school too, aren't we? Okay. There were a lot of questions that came up. I can tell everyone is uneasy about this, so let me start from the top. We will not be providing additional funds at this time. However, we will be prepared to pay out a reimbursement check of 75% for all supplies purchased on the last day of school. We will also be... We're supposed to put our lives at risk for a year, all while providing our own cleaning crap. Then, if we make it to the end, you're going to give us 75% of what we spent back? Is this really how we're going to play this? Look, I don't make the rules. I'm just the messenger. 
but we do have Ashley from HR here. If anyone wants to take matters up with her, they certainly can. But I'd ask for you to wait until the presentation is over with. Okay, great. Now, I'm gonna mute everyone and you will be able to speak after I've completed this. Triggered me, we go. Yeah, okay, mute all. How do I mute all? I know how to are you hitting mute? Fine, third time's a charm. Okay. <laughs> I just want to point out that many teachers are crowdsourcing for supplies or including it on their wish list, and that may be a great way for you all to gather supplies. Okay, Ashley, next slide. Backup plans. If we have an uptick in cases, we will be prepared to move into a hybrid of in-person and remote learning. So students would be in different cohorts and those would dictate what days certain groups of students are in the building. Teachers and staff would be required to be in the building every day for that option though. And the same would be true if we moved into the fully remote learning option. You want to allow questions? It looks like several people have something to say. Oh, do I have to? Legally, no, but ethically, since this is being recorded and will later be broadcast, you probably should. It's up to you, though. Okay, I guess I will unmute for questions now. Why the hell would we have to be in the building for remote learning? How does that even make sense? If students get to be remote, we should, too. If there's an outbreak, I'm not stepping foot in that building. I understand the concerns, and we will be sending out a mandatory survey where you can be even more vocal about your preferences for the school year. We have several staff members that are higher risk or live with high risk family members. We need to be protecting those members of the community. This plan does not do that. How can we comfortably move forward knowing we might lose people? And those people might have thrown down a boatload of money on supplies that they won't even live to see compensation for. This isn't acceptable. Again, you'll be able to voice concerns in the upcoming survey. Next slide. Poor participation, attendance, and or negligence. Now. This is something we need to be mindful of since we have had several issues with unresponsive parents when we first moved to remote learning in the spring. So we will be involving DCF again on a need to know basis. I think we need to be cutting parents some slack because I remember what it was like to have to teach and homeschool my kid and do all that stuff during lockdown. If we move back to remote learning, I'm gonna have to be teaching my class. My husband's gonna be working. We don't have someone else here who can do remote learning with our kids, so we can't even do it. So how can families do it if we can't even do it? Mary, I understand. I have a child as well, but we all need to do our part, which is why we will have a five-part response to these types of incidents. Next slide. This basically starts with teachers discussing the problem with the student in hopes of correcting the behavior or situation. Then the next offense would be reported to me and hopefully end there. However, if not, the next offense would lead to me contacting guardians for corrective action. The next one would lead to myself, the student, and their guardian and their teacher having a meeting. And that is when I would also wish issue a final warning. Lastly, we would contact DCF if we ever felt we needed to. This would, of course, be situational, but we have an outline of that plan that defines it all further. Mm -hmm. um, how many times did we contact DCF last year? Yeah, I'm not sure I can say. Oh, why not? It's in the paper. We all saw the article. Mm. Five. Five times. No action was taken, though, because there wasn't actually enough evidence in any of those claims. Many of those parents were unresponsive because they didn't have internet or reliable devices to communicate on. And instead of helping them, <coughs> we just went and reported them. Real nice. Get some water. Get some water, man. It is our job to make sure that students are safe in their homes and we will investigate all of the claims. We may have made some missteps, but we now know that those children are safe. I just looked up that article. Most of these children were Latino or black. What does that mean? It means nothing. What are you insinuating? It's bad enough that racial and ethnic minority groups are being disproportionately affected by COVID because they might live in poverty or be uninsured, but now we're gonna target them 
as negligent parents and give them one more thing to worry about when they're doing the best they can. Damn, I can't get behind that. I this is unacceptable because we should be offering resources. Yeah, I don't think I can work for an institution that's moving in this direction. We're all able to make decisions in, in whatever way we think are best. Next slide. <sighs> ah, yes, the surveys I've been talking about. Those will be sent out to teachers and students by the end of the day tomorrow. And again, they are mandatory. Yeah, we got that the first 100 times you said it. Thank you. Teachers will be assigned extended day schedules, which will be mandatory as well. And lastly, we will be issuing a waiver that needs to be signed prior to returning the building, just as a formality. But next slide. Guess what? You can expect these fun learning spaces that we'll be working to create as a team. Which brings us to our last slide. Last slide. Ashley, these slides. Sorry about that. Our goal for the next meeting will be to have the classroom set up, to conduct hand-on training, and to prepare for the first day. Are we supposed to get tested before the first day? Well, I think we forgot to include that in this presentation. I left it out on purpose. We will be requiring weekly testing that will be an out-of-pocket cost for all faculty and staff. But what? What? I can't afford that on top of everything else. HR can provide additional resources for those in need. Are the kids going to be tested every week? We can't really enforce that, but we will have a daily symptom checker for parents to fill out. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you. Well, I recognize that there is some unrest here, but I assure you we'll be safe in the building and we're doing the best. Where's Kathleen? Did she get tested? Hmm. I can't really speak about her whereabouts, but she won't be returning anytime soon. Because she got COVID in Florida, right? We're not really allowed to speak on staff details like that. Oh, come on. We have the right to know. Fine. <laughs> okay, fine. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. My job is probably on the line anyway. She's not returning because she's in the ICU with COVID, okay? Are you happy? I mean, no one's really happy about it, but like, come on, we know. Yeah. So we're returning without a health teacher. No. We have a substitute lined up. She wasn't able to make it tonight, but you'll meet her soon. Actually, I have an announcement I was going to post on her, so hold on. I'll share my screen. Okay, sharing screen. We figured it out. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> this is her. She's been a health teacher for over uh, 20 years, and the funny thing is... We're not seeing that. Uh, we're seeing an email about your kid not returning to school. Come again? Hmm. You shared the wrong screen. Mm -hmm. I'm writing to inform you that Ferguson will no longer be enrolled in his school as we are not comfortable with your safety policies. We've had our issues in the past with required vaccinations, and now we are uncomfortable with the idea of mandatory flu shots on top of that all. For those reasons and several others, we will homeschool from here on out. Are you fucking kidding me? If his kid isn't going, why the hell should ours? I, I'm on a meeting right now. It's like bullshit. I it's know, bullshit. I know it's bullshit. I get it. Yeah, all right. I mean, look, meet yourself. We can, we can hear y'all. Look, this is all just a big understanding. See, I, um. I think you should probably. You better resign because at this rate, none of your staff is gonna wanna show up for any of this bullshit. You know what, Noah? I just think that you should stop talking and we will meet and figure this out and then we'll reconvene and we'll discuss more details. Let's just end the meeting. Okay. We're going to end the meeting. Um, and oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go again. No one. No one. Third time. Third time, man.
Well, that did not go well. <laughs>